disappeared, Rami. Oh, yeah. How do you explain the slaughter of 50 million people in China by Mao? Not a place where Kant was influential. Really? Really? Kant wasn't influential in China? What are you talking about? The people who ran the Chinese Communist Party were all educated in places like Moscow or in the West. And who were they educated by? They were educated by Marxists. And what is Marx if not a direct descendant intellectually from Kant? He is, you know. So absolutely, uh, you know, the murder of, of 50 million people, 60 million people under Mao is directly related to Kantian philosophy, to Marxist philosophy, to German romantic philosophy. And the influence of German romantic philosophy was huge. Now, let me also say that just because Kant was an incredibly evil, according to Ayn Rand, the most evil person in history, she had a deeper understanding of Kant than I do. I can't say that claim uh, without, you know, I just can't other than relying on her because I don't know enough about philosophy and history. But I believe, her. you know, she's, she's been pretty reliable in my life so far. Um, that doesn't mean that every murder in every place uh, around the world uh, was related to Immanuel Kant. But in the case of China, of course it was. And I'll give you another example, the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Where did they go to school? Where did they get the ideas that led them to slaughter 40% of their own population? Two million people out of five were slaughtered by the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Where did they get those ideas? In Paris, where they studied with the great, you know, egalitarian philosophers, the existentialists, who are the heirs of whom of the Marxists, who are the heirs of whom the Kantians. So in the West, in the West, you cannot find a real significant evil that one cannot link back to Kant, to Kant and hold him morally culpable not legally culpable. You can't equivocate between morality and politics. I keep saying this, but it, it, you know people can't think in those terms. I know a lot of people that are immoral. Why are they immoral? Because they don't use their minds, because they don't take their life seriously, because they don't dedicate themselves to the pursuit of their own flourishing. But you don't put them in jail for that. But then you take a university professor who is constantly on university campuses preaching that the human mind is impotent, that race is what matters, that all that matters is race, and uh, that, that if you you're in the wrong race, you, you're a victim, and if you're in the, uh, another race, you, you should be ashamed of yourself, and you should have guilt, white guilt, or brown guilt, or green guilt, whatever, right? doesn't matter what race. These people are evil, and you have to declare them as evil. And then when those students go out and riot and pepper spray people, well, you hold the professor morally culpable, not legally culpable. You put the kids in jail, of course, we don't even do that because we're, we're so appeasing, we let them get away with it. But you put the kids in jail, the ones who pepper sprayed, the one who beat other people up. But you hold the professor morally accountable and you condemn them and you condemn their ideas and you, and you argue against them. But to not hold the professor morally culpable for the, for the violence that their students have perpetrated, violence motivated by the ideas the professor has taught, is bizarre, completely bizarre. Now, we are committing the sanction of, of the victim if we don't speak up, if we don't argue against them. And, and it, it's true that university professors who teach this crap and who, who, are, who are motivating these students to behave in the way they are, can only exist and thrive and be successful because the good professors, the people who hold good ideas, and we out there in the world who hold, are too silent. We don't condemn them. We don't fight against the evil everywhere we see it. We are way too passive, particularly in academia. So evil succeeds because, as Ayn Rand said, because the good is silent. That, the fact that we're silent doesn't give them, doesn't uh, kind of uh, whitewash the fact that they are bad, that they are evil, and that their ideas are evil, and they, uh, as human beings, these professors are evil. 
because of the ideas that they hold and that they teach. These ideas are nihilistic, they're destructive. Now, let me let me make this point. I, I, I know I've got at least one other caller, but let, let me make this point because it's an important point. I want to make sure I get to it, right? What's the difference between Plato and Kant? And, and I'm not going to get into a whole, or Plato and Marx, right? Uh, a whole thing about Kant, because again, I, 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 you know, read fact and value, read Ayn Rand's analysis of Kant to get the sense, but what's the difference between Plato and Kant? Um, because yeah, in a sense, and as, uh, as Leonard Peikoff's epilogue says, you know, all, all the bad ideas in, in, in Western civilization ha have their origins in Plato. But why don't we hold Plato quite as morally culpable as we hold Kant? Because the, the essence of the evil is, um, the, or the degree of evil, is a consequence of how much you know your ideas are destructive. The extent to which you have the evidence, you have the ability to know to know that the facts around you, that, that, that the facts contradict the ideas that you hold. Plato comes so early in the history of philosophy, but not just in the history of philosophy, in the history of mankind, in the history of civilization. There's just, you can't blame Cato, uh, uh, Cato, Plato for having the wrong answers. He asks the right questions. He comes up with the wrong answers. But there's not a lot of historical evidence. There's not a lot of other philosophers challenging him. He's early. He's kind of first on the scene, or one of the first on the scenes. And there are such things of errors of knowledge, errors of ignorance. You don't evaluate an error the same way you evaluate an evasion or a conscious choice to advocate for destructive ideas. Noam Chomsky was an apologist for the Khmer Rouge after he knew the Khmer Rouge had slaughtered two million of their own people. The massive evasion that, that, that's involved there, right? Well, it, it's not evasion because he knew it, right? The massive evil that is involved there in recognizing that your ideas are leading to destruction, leading to death, and defending them in spite of it. Plato, I don't think, knew the extent to which his ideas were destructive. And he was struggling. And even there, his ideas are not as destructive as Kant's because he's not as consistent as Kant. He still strives towards some kind of utopia. He still strives towards human happiness. He still strives towards people achieving some form of happiness. He's wrong. And therefore, is the enemy intellectually. And they sh therefore, his ideas in terms of implementing them and integrating them into your life should be avoided. But he's not at the same level of somebody who comes 2,000 years later, who has a knowledge of history, who has all the philosophical discussions that happened up until that point, who knows so much about the world around them, who, who, who's lived and sees history playing out. At Kant, I mean, oh my God, Kant, who, who, denou who at the end destroys reason to make room for faith, he says, right? Post-scientific revolution, post the facts right there in front of him of the efficacy of reason, and then he denies it and rejects it. Post the Declaration of Independence in the United States, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, of, 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 of real progress in standard of living a human being, all that rejected, denied, put aside, and in its place a focus on basically the rejection of reason and the rejection of a, of a pro-human, uh, individual human happiness. And there's no utopia with Kant. There's no even afterlife with Kant. This is what makes him worse than the Christians. There's no afterlife. You suffer in this life because it's your duty. That's it. There's no reward. There's no something you get out of it. There's no semblance of, of, of self or egoism or pursuit of happiness in Kant. He is that depraved, that evil. Now, Plato, there's Aristotle as a counter. And everybody who comes after Plato and Aristotle has a choice to make. 
They can choose Plato or they can choose Aristotle. Plato didn't have Aristotle before him. I would argue that Plato was more evil than he than I now would argue if he had come after Aristotle. But coming before Aristotle, coming before the first philosopher who really articulates a pro-life philosophy, a pro-life philosophy, you know, you can't you can't place him on the same again, moral standard, moral evaluation as you do uh, as you do others. Now again, I repeat, these are moral evaluations. They're not political evaluations. Politics have to has to do with individual rights. Hitler violated individual rights. Kant did not. Stalin violated individual rights. Marx and Engels did not. Therefore, you you know you, you you've got recourse, political recourse in terms of in terms of uh, the the police, the military, whatever you need to do against the murderer. You don't have political recourse against Kant, Marx. They have free speech, and I would defend their right to free speech on the barricades. Right? But. It's it's it, it it it's funny that people are arguing that these positions are contrary to the objectivist epistemology. I mean, you can argue that you don't agree with these positions, but given that Ayn Rand held these positions, I find it difficult to 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 uh, to view them as positions contrary to to the objectivist epistemology. Um, okay, so politically, right? You can't do anything to these people. They have free speech, and you have to defend their free speech. But morally, you have to condemn them. And you have to condemn them as much as you condemn the practitioners of their evil ideologies.